that right. And I know you know usually you don't testify before you preach, but I got something to brag on the Lord about too. You know, uh, I can't go I can't go without bragging on him for answering a prayer, amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I was praying around Monday morning and God spoke to my heart to start praying for that woman right there sitting in that pew, amen, Sister Michelle. I don't know what it was for. I don't really know what it was for, but God spoke to my heart and said, I want you to pray for her all the way to work every morning this week. And I'm telling you right now, I'm saying why. Amen. amen. I praise him for that. Amen. amen. I praise him for amen. that. Amen. I didn't know what it was for, but I do now. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful. Amen. We need to be. We need to be willing to obey God when he speaks to us. Amen. I didn't know what it was for, but it ain't for me to know. Amen. It ain't for me to know, praise the Lord. I just want to do what he tells me to do, amen. I struggle with that sometimes, amen. I, I want to sit there and argue with him until the time's passed, amen. And or is that you sure that's you, God? No, do it one more time. I know it's you. I, you know what I'm saying? But I'm thankful, amen, that I answered that prayer, amen. She's back in God's house with us today, amen. Praise the Lord for that, amen. Uh, got your Bibles turned to the book of Genesis. Amen. Been digging around in there for a little while. Going to back up to uh, chapter 16. Amen. We said 21 last week. We're going to bounce around a little bit, read some scripture here and there. But Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to read one verse out of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The first part of that verse. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God's good, amen. Verse 9, I'm going to read that first part of that verse. All right. Save me when you get there. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 5, 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 9. I'm just going to read the first part of the verse. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Reading for the reading of God's Word, chapter 16, we're going to start with verse 1. It says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, now this is before God started calling Sarah and Abraham, Sarah and Abraham, they were Sarah and Abram at first, amen. Uh, so just didn't want you to get confused on that, amen. But it says, Now Sarah and Abram's wife bear him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my handmaid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram, Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah's Abram's wife took Hagar, her handmaid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and she saw that she had conceived. Her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Amen. If you would, flip over to Second Peter, praise the Lord, chapter 3, verse 9, amen. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, amen. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Praise the Lord. If you would stand all over God's house, 
and let's invite his presence. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for each and every soul represented in this house today, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you deal with their hearts such a way, Lord God, that you teal that fallow ground up, Lord God, and break up that ground so the seed could fall on good ground in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus for your anointing today. May it rest upon your servant, Lord God, as I deliver your message, Lord God, that you've laid on my heart to preach, Lord God. May the words that you've given me pierce the hearts of the congregation and everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord God, so that may grow in you, Lord God, and bring forth much fruit from the word of God, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray for encouragement today. I pray for strength today, Lord God. I pray for the chains to be broken in people's lives all through this place and under the sound of my voice through the internet, whoever may hear this word that you've given me, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd be with us in this altar service. Don't let me say anything outside of your will, Lord God, today, Lord God. And once again, I just praise you for who you are and what you're going to do today, Lord God. Thank you for that finished work on Calvary. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated all over God's house. Amen. Praise the Lord. We read about old Hagar last week about her about to thirst to death next to a well. Amen. But I'm going to preach uh, a little bit before then uh, this week. And, and the title of the message that the Lord give me is, It's Worth the Wait. Amen. Amen. It's worth the wait. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's worth the wait. Amen. It's, you know, here we read in chapter 16 that Sarah and Abraham, or Abram at this time, we're getting impatient, amen. We see in verse 2, if you would, if you read, look back where we just read, amen, it says, And Sarah, Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my handmaid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Amen. So here, uh, Sarah, Sarah, she's trying to turn God's will into her own will, if you will. Amen. God's will wasn't for Hagar to birth that child that was going to be the heir of God, the heir of God's children. Amen. But here, Sarah is. She's getting in a hurry. She's getting impatient, and so all of a sudden, she's taking her, uh, taking it into her own will to help God out. Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, how many of you ever been in that? Position where you want to help God out a little bit, amen. Come on, they thought they would just help God out. You know what I'm talking about, amen. You ever helped God out to the point where you took his will and turned it into your own, amen. Come on now, I know I ain't the only one in here, praise the Lord, amen. Maybe because things weren't happening uh, quite the way you wanted them to, amen. They weren't working out quite how your brain had pictured it to, amen. Maybe it wouldn't happen fast enough, amen. Because that's where we really get in trouble right there, amen. We don't want to wait on God, amen, and it ain't happening fast enough, so here we go. We want to be God's little helper and just jump on in the middle of things and turn his will into our own will, amen. That's exactly what's going on here right now. She even tried to justify it. She said, maybe that I, uh, she said, it may be that way that I may obtain children through Hagar instead of waiting on God's promise that he promised, and I'm going to read it to you, it was God's will, amen, you know, they were stepping completely out of God's will. They were in disobedience, direct disobedience when they did this, because in uh, chapter 15, if you look over there in the chapter before, amen, in verse 1 through 5, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is, is this uh, Eleazar of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given, me, given no seed, and lo, one born in, in my house is mine hair. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair, thine heir, but the but that child, but that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine hair. And he brought forth him abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. So it's supposed to go a different way. And if you look on over in chapter 17, I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I want to put scripture into what I'm just going to preach. Amen. Uh, if you look over in chapter 17 and verse 15, it tells us, and it says, And God said unto Abraham, 
as for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yeah, I will bless her and she shall be the mother of the nation. Kings of people shall be of her. Amen. So there's the confirmation that it was not supposed to be Hagar. It was supposed to be Sarah. But here they are on the help God out. On the get all in the way. Amen. And just rush things on up. Amen. How many of you got a situation in your life right now that you're waiting on God? Come on, somebody. I know we all are. Amen. Somebody, you got something going on yes, in your life. Can I give you some advice straight from the uh, Bible today? Don't help God out. Just wait on him, amen, because it's worth the wait, amen. It's well worth the wait, praise God. We can make a mess of things when we try to help God out. Now, I know there's a, dif there's a difference before I get any further to, to obeying God. Now, if he tells you to help him, you need to go on and help him, amen. That's something I was talking about struggling with a while ago. If I'm in the dollar store and he nudges me, says, go speak to this person, I want you to tell him Jesus loves you, and I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know if he's going to see that too well. Lord God. <laughs> that is not good. You know, I, that, that's, what, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, and I kind of struggle with this too. God's working on me on it. I see somebody that knows what the Bible says and they still walk in direct disobedience of what God's word says. Amen. I know what it says. They know what it says. But here I'm going to be helping God out and I'm going to go over there and tell them about it. Come on, somebody. We can make a mess of things when we do these things because I can promise you one thing. If they know what the word of God says and they know what it says, they know what they should be doing, the Holy Ghost is dealing with them about that. And if the Holy Ghost can't get them to do it, Shane Hamlin can't get them to do it either, amen. Come on, somebody. The only time that you will ever see me say anything to anybody about stepping outside of God's will is when I let them up on this platform right here to sing, to preach, to do anything like that. Because if they're in direct disobedience of God and I'm allowing them to be up here, guess what? That's on me, amen. Amen. That's on me. So that's the only time, amen, but sometimes I want to get out and get ahead of God, and I always want to go over there and, and help God out and say, hey, it says don't do that. Come on. But God's working on me on that, amen. Amen. I feel like, you know, uh, since I've been pastoring and, and even before, God's really showed me that you have to be patient with people. Because guess what? He was patient with me, amen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was times I knew I was doing wrong and I continued on into it and he had to get it out of me, amen. If I sit there and pester somebody about it till they just get tired of me saying it and they finally change, guess what? It's going to come back. But when God does it, it ain't going to come back, amen. amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. But we see that after Hagar uh, uh, conceived, we see how much of a mess that helping God out can be, amen, that helping God out can be, we see that right off the bat, Sarah, she starts getting mad about it. Jealousy starts seeping in her mind. She starts getting bitter about it. Oh, he's looking at me for something. I'm, I'm just messing with you. But anyhow, amen, jealousy starts seeping in, amen. It already starts out in a mess. And if we go back and look at verse 12, amen, after she has the son, it says that he will be a wild man, talking about the son that she's supposed to have. He will be a wild man, and every hand will be against every man, and every man's hands will be against him. So because they got in a hurry, they did not wait on God, all of a sudden bitterness is in, in Sarah's heart toward this woman because she conceived and she had a child, and she didn't, amen. God already promised her a child. Amen. But she chose not to wait on God and she chose to help him out. And it made it a mess. It made it a mess. Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, now Abram, he's 86 years old. If we look back in uh, verse 16, it says, And Abram was four score and six years. A score is 20 years. So four score and six years would be 86 years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to uh, Abraham. And if we bounce back over in 
chapter 16 and verse 3, it says, And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar and her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So when God promised Abram this promise, it was already ten years had passed by, plus fourteen when he had buried the son of Ish when she buried the son of Ishmael. So here they have waited twenty-four years, amen, waiting on God's promise to come in. I believe everybody in here get a little impatient after twenty-four years, but I can promise you one thing: it is well worth yeah. the wait, amen. It is worth the wait. Amen. Because if Abraham, Abraham and Sarah was here right now, they tell you that the seed that they waited on, Isaac was born. Amen. And out of that seed, Isaac born, uh, I think Joseph was Isaac's grandson. Amen. Joseph was Isaac's grandson. And out of that lineage, Joseph would lead the people of Israel to be preserved in Egypt when famine would hit. Moses was born out of that lineage. Amen. He would lead the people out of Israel. Amen out of Egypt, I should say, out of slavery. Jesus Christ was born out of that lineage to be a savior of the world. So let me tell you today, it is well worth the wait to wait on God because good things is going to come from it. It's worth the wait, amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's hard to wait. My, 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 it is very hard to wait. They waited 24 years, amen, and Sarah, she even laughed. If you go on and read this story, it says that Sarah laughed when God told her that she was going to bear a son. You got to figure she was 99 years old, or no, she was 90. Uh, Abraham, was, uh, Abraham was 100. So when God told her that, she's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's pretty much she was saying to God. But you got to understand, with God, all things are possible, amen. If he can split the Red Sea, he can make a 90-year-old man produce a baby, amen. He can make a 90-year-old woman produce a baby. If he can split, he can make time stand still for Joshua, he can make that happen, amen. If he can make a little old running shepherd boy sling a rock into a giant's forehead and kill him, he can make this happen, amen. If he can pull a dope head out of Fairview, Alabama, and then turn it pretty behind a he can do this, amen. It ain't nothing for him, amen. God is the master of turning the impossible into possible, amen. Don't you ever let anybody tell you who that you are in God, amen. You let God tell you that. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's well worth the wait, praise God. Amen. Don't let doubt enter into your mind and rob you of the promise of God, amen. That's what the devil was trying to do to Sarah. Let that doubt enter in, amen, and, and rob her, amen, for the promise. I can tell you it's worth the wait. Amen. I remember, and I bring this a lot, a, a lot up of experiences I went through while I was at the city of refuge because it's my testimony. That's the only way I know how to preach, amen, is tell you things that's happened in my life. Amen. But when I was at the city of refuge, I was getting, you know, restored. God was restoring things back to me. Amen. And, and I, I, I was starting to get my mind back right and wanting to get a job, wanting to get things, wanting to get a family. Amen. And, and, and life had just pretty much destroyed everything that me and Sylvia had going. We weren't talking about getting back together or anything like that. And, and here I'll go wanting to help God out. I'm going to help him out. I'm going to start completely over again. I'm going to go help God out. I was in a church service one night, and a man prophesied over my life. And you may think prophecy ain't, ain't well, I don't care what you think, it's real. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I believe somebody can read your mail just like that, amen, yeah. if the Holy Ghost wants them to. And he told me, he said, I want you to know that you have an adulterous spirit hanging over your head right now. And whoever you're talking to is blocking you from the biggest blessing of your life, amen. Spoke it right into my life, amen. About a month later, I was kneeling down at the altar, and God showed me a vision. It was me, Sylvia, Gabby, and a little boy I didn't even know who was at the, at the point. But he showed me that vision right there, amen. And a little while longer, it came to pass, amen. I can tell you today, it's worth the wait, amen. It's worth the wait to wait on God and do it his way, praise God. I watch Sister Agnes, my mama, my mama-in-law, whatever you want to call her, amen. I call her mama, amen. But 
Sister Agnes, she stands up and testifies just about every time I go to church down there about her three children that are not saved and in church. She's got two. She's got Brother Robbie. He's, got, he's a preacher. Sister Gloria's brother Larry's all out there in church, but she's still got three of them that's still out there. But God spoke to her and told her that all three of those children would be in church by the time she left this earth. Amen. She's standing on God's promise because she knows it's worth the wait. She's not giving up on them. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's worth the wait. Faith is not seeing the results and waiting on it. That's not faith. Well, I see the finish line. I can see what's going to happen, so I'm just going to wait to let go ahead and do it. That is not faith. Faith is, is, is waiting on it without seeing the results. Can somebody say amen? Faith is not seeing what's going to happen. Faith is knowing that God is makes all things possible and that it's going to come to pass in Jesus' name, no matter if I can see it or not. I think about Sister Lee's son all the time when I, when I think about faith. I've heard several people testifying here about a vision. Yes. They seen that boy standing outside a building helping people get off drugs. Amen. I'm still standing on that promise. Amen. I'm still waiting on it. Amen. Because I know when that building erects out there and he's over all that, it's going to be well worth the wait. Come on, somebody. I believe it. If God speaks it, it's going to come to pass. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Somebody sent me this uh, scripture out of Habakkuk. I want to read it to you. Amen. I was already kind of preparing for this message this week, and man of God that he texts me every morning just about it, sends me a little something, and he, and he sent me this, kind of confirmed everything for me. But in the second chapter, uh, verse 3, it says, For the vision is yet for the appointed time. The promise is yet for the appointed time, pretty much. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Yes, yes. Amen. Though it tarry, wait for it. And I love this part. Because surely it will come. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. And it will not tarry. Surely it will come. I can promise you every promise in this Bible is well worth the wait. Amen. Every promise that he, that he gives us is well worth the wait. Amen. Because surely it will come to pass. Amen. Surely it will. Praise the Lord. And I know it gets hard sometimes to wait on God, but he's got another promise in here for that. Amen. If you look over in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord, come on somebody, shall renew their strength. Strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on, somebody. Say amen. He don't just promise us that promise. He promises to get us from point A to point B. He said, you will not faint if you keep your trust in me. Amen. You will not faint if you'll just keep walking in obedience to me. Amen. Because it is well worth the wait. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Come on, sister. Can It's going to be worth the wait, I promise you. Amen. Whatever you're waiting on, just keep on waiting. Amen. Keep on serving God in the process. Amen. Keep on serving God in the process. You know, on Jacob, if you want to read the story about Jacob, it's a little bit, little bit further ahead in Genesis. I think it starts in chapter 25, goes on to chapter 32. Uh, tells you about the story of Jacob. Jacob is Abraham's grandson. It'd be Isaac's son. Amen. Uh, you, you know, he had, a, he had a problem about waiting too. He kind of reminded me a little bit about myself when I was out seeing Because he was always trying to deceive somebody. He was always trying to hustle somebody out of something. Come on, somebody. He took his brother. He's been out in the field hunting deer all day long, amen. And here's brother come in, just pour a slap out, just wanting something to drink. And he made his brother, see, so he hustled his brother out of his birthright for a bowl of soup. Come on, some of his own flesh and blood. Then he turned around, and his daddy was fixing to give the blessing away to Esau. He went out there and got goat's hair, and his mama was in on it too. 
wrapped him because the Bible said that Esau had to back up. He, he was a red furry man. I don't know. <laughs> they said he was born with hair all over him, I guess. And here Jacob was. He was old, soft as a box of tissues, man, I guess. But he had to go out and cut some goat's hair, and he wrapped it on his arms, and he went in there, and he tricked his own father. He deceived his own father. He hustled his own father to try to get the blessing from God. And he got it. But he got to a point in his life where he paid for every bit of that stuff that he done. I'm going to let you read it and then you'll find out what happened. But he got to a place in his life that he had to wrestle with God. Amen. In chapter uh, 32, I want to read one scripture. Or actually a couple of them. Chapter 32. Verse 20 through 24 through 26. He said, And Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said unto him, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Amen. I'm telling you, y'all know where Jacob was at. You know where Jacob was at. You're sitting there waiting on the Lord. You're trying to do what God wants you to do. But everything in this world keeps pulling you away from it. Amen. Everything in your flesh keeps pulling you away from it. I'm telling you today, you need to tell God, I'm not going to let go of you. I'm going to hold on to that nail-scarred hand. I don't care how long it takes. Amen. I am not letting it go until this blessing comes to pass. Amen. I am not letting it go. Said, I ain't letting me go, God. I don't care what happens. I don't care what happens. I'm not letting go. Amen. And I promise you, it's going to be worth the wait. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. If you would stand all over God's house. We serve a faithful God. I can promise you that. He's faithful. Not 99.9% of the time. 100% of the time. And you say, well, I've been waiting on this. I've been waiting on that. Why has it come to pass? I got things piling up. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I just, I just, but God is trying to work something out of you the entire time. The entire time that you're sitting there struggling, I'm telling you, God's trying to work something out of you, amen. The entire time that you're sitting there waiting, God's building strength in you, amen. Come on, somebody. God is trying to do something to you, amen. Don't be blaming God because it ain't come to pass yet. Just embrace it, amen. Paul, he said he could have just sit there the whole time. He said, God, I don't know why I'm in this prison. Here I am, just been walking around preaching your word the whole time. I've been winning souls, but here I am in this prison. But he didn't do it. He started praising him until an earthquake came and rattled those jails out. Amen. Come on now. we got to be just stuck, rooted in God. Amen. To be able to enjoy these blessings. We have to wait on them. Because if we go around helping God out, come on somebody, our life is going to be a wreck. Amen. It's going to be a wreck. Help him out, not unless he tells you to. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. Lord God, we thank you that we can count on you 100% of the time, Lord God. And Lord God, if you've spoken in our life, Lord God, I know it's going to come to pass, but just give us the strength today to wait on you because it's well worth the wait, Lord God. We already know all the things of you is well worth the wait, Lord God. I pray for this altar service, Lord God, that you'd stir our hearts up, Lord God, to wait on you and do more for you, Lord God, to serve you and be more faithful to you. In Jesus' name, Lord God, I thank you and love you today, and I ask you to bless each and every one of us today in this house, Lord God, with a desire to serve you and be faithful to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on up these altars and pray today. Hallelujah.